Today we are looking at a game between the two highest ranked bots on AIarena.net. It's going to be between Eris and Daimos. Eris is the uh, winner of the latest major bot competition and Daimos, I think that's how it's pronounced, is created by the same people, by Team Eris, that also made the bot called Eris. So really it is a, a friendly match. But this is the highest level of bots uh, th that there are currently, from what I saw on the ladder. Uh, there's an ELO system in which all bots play each other. I think there's uh, 60, 70 bots or so that are playing each other on a, on a daily basis or even on an hourly basis. And uh, these two are the highest ranked ones. So I just found a game between those two. It's going to be on Equilibrium. It's the, uh, also on an older map pool. I believe it's pretty tricky for them to implement the bots on new maps. So they often are a couple of map pools behind. Um, un until they, they fix that. So equilibrium it is. We have a quick drone scout coming out of Ares, making sure that uh, they're not being proxied by anything weird. Double gas following up as well. Now for the people who have never watched a bot match before, the APM is going to go extremely high. As you can see, we have an APM of 1900. And unlike these idiotic pro gamers spamming high APM, for the bots, there's actually a, a purpose. As you can see, these drones, they go much faster than they usually do. That's because they order a shift click command before they hit the mineral patch. That allows them to remove the deacceleration that you usually have and thus it, it just moves quicker. It goes faster. Um, this especially is useful at the far away patches. If you have two workers and you do this properly, I believe you get about as much income as with a close by patch. So you need less workers for the same amount of money. And it also means you get your money a lot quicker. And that's why we see these double gas openers. So these are not optimal openers for professional players to play, but that is because professional players are worse. Professional players will not be capable of getting this amount of resources. We see instant speed as well as an instant layer coming down here for Ares. At the same time for Deimos, we have no wall, which I'm not sure if that surprises me. And we have a wall upstairs, but not downstairs. So maybe, you know, that. It's hard to know, unless you've watched a lot of these games, why certain things happen. Sometimes they're blind countering, sometimes this is just better as a standard rule. Um, so for me, who hasn't watched a whole lot of these games, it's going to be difficult to figure out. Quick layer though is weird. Usually we see more queens early on. Voidray as the first unit, good safety unit of course. Oracle can be a little bit hard, especially if you don't have a wall to continuously be shooting at links. Um, as this adept is now trying to take something out, good control so far on it. Queens don't want to move off creep chasing this adept. These adept shades are going to be microed independently from one another. Well, these adepts are going to be microed independently from one another. Usually, of course, we see two adepts together because they one shot drones. Let's see how Ares is going to deal with this. Okay, shade does not quite finish up. They are together here right now. Lots of mining actually being denied. Shade coming into scout does not quite see the spire. This should finish, I think, yeah. Actually, there's a lot of opportunity to kill stuff here on the low ground. I'm shocked to not see anything happen there. This adept is still going back up. Worker count is 36 to 34. Oh, there we go. Drones are actually attacking a little bit, but not for too long. Oh, micro on that drone was not perfect. But it seems good enough. So far, only three workers have been killed, with one more definitely on the way to dying. Nope. Daimos is not going to be capable of getting that quite yet. Maybe here we're going to get another one. No, some good split shots. Okay, one more goes down. No spore tricks to dodge these uh, adept shots. I guess that gets pretty pricey pretty quickly if things go wrong. Spire is about to finish up. And then we're going to see Mudas. Now, of course, we have the Stargate. And I wonder if we're going to see a preemptive response of, uh, of Phoenixes. Or if those Phoenixes will only start building the moment... The Muta start hitting the main base. Glaives is going to be the follow-up. Couple of stalkers are being built as well. Lots of individual adepts just kind of roaming around looking for kills. Eight kills total so far. No third base, by the way, yet for Eris, who is uh, floating about 700 gas, but doesn't have the minerals really to to build those uh, that the initial swell of Muta list that Eris ideally wants. Stalkers now moving across the map. Voidray is going to join in on the fun as well. Third base perhaps going to be taken. A very active early game. Another worker goes down. That's 10 total. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So you can see it in all its glory. 
Drones being pulled back, being pulled forward. Queen's now going to uh, try and fight off this Void Ray. Muna gets microed away from the Void. Void should die here. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. Yep, there we go. It's going to end up falling. And I think most of everything has been cleaned at this point. First Stargate unit is out. Or sorry, second Stargate unit is out. It's a Phoenix. So these stalkers are kind of bugging out. Don't have Blink quite yet. Glaives has not really been used. Nice control here uh, on the Phoenix as well as on the Mutas. Phoenix theoretically I don't think should ever really get hit. Unless it gets confused. So he goes for one shot and then moves away. You see that? Making sure that he can never get hit by these Muralisks. This is very nice micro. Second Phoenix individually also going to be controlled. Pros being pulled out of the way as well. So it's really difficult to get any kills here with these Muralisks. Uh, no matter how well they're being microed. We see a group of three, four here on the right side. We see a group of two or three here on the top. And I think we had one down here. No, we don't. Ling is scouting, seeing this move out. This Ling is going to end up falling to the Stalker. His two Phoenixes now will clear this Mutalisk, who's kind of pulling these Phoenixes away. And as a result, a bunch of probes are actually going to end up being taken out. Look at that. This probe is kind of stuck. Absolute wanker. I think there are enough Phoenixes, though, at this point. Yeah, four Phoenixes to deal with the seven Mutas. Still have a group of four Mutas on the right side. One Muta here is going to get taken out. You have Changelings coming across the map. An Overseer. Plus one attack. Burrow as well as more drones. Eco-wise, Deimos is a little bit ahead. Because there is a third base. Income-wise, not quite ahead. But uh, I guess this one's about to finish up as well. So actually, Eris is just in a better spot. So... Our pros player will need to clear up these uh, last few Mutas. And now, ideally, you actually clear it as fast as possible. So here, the high-level micro is actually a bit of a detriment to the speed of clearing this, right? You'd rather have it gone quickly and take a little bit of shield damage. I guess uh, probs is going to do that just fine. Picks up the changeling, kills it instantly. Could have probably done it with a probe. Would have been a bit better. But good enough anyway. Hydra, then, is about to finish up. And we're going to see a transition now into Hydras. You have Immortals coming in. No Robotics Bay, no Forge, no Storm. So no real Splash. I guess Splash not quite as useful against people that can split each unit individually. The APMs now are uh, averaging 6k for the Toss and about 9k for the Zerg. Once again proving that Zerg is the harder race to play. This Mutalisk is still harassing. Oh, Burrowed Link, that is very pretty. I bet this used to be a legit strategy at some point for the bots as well. Is where you would just open up with like a burrow rush and you just burrow at every expansion. And then the bots were too dumb to figure out how to deal with it. I wonder how quick this is going to get cleared now that there are burrowed links. Because nothing is being built. Observer is not being sent over. So I guess it is still a pretty valid play to burrow links at the location. It's really difficult, I think, to deal with burrowed and invisible units in general. I guess you can see invisible units, but burrowed units? No real information there, except that something doesn't build. Queen being picked up and then dropped and then picked up and dropped and now finally picked up and killed. Lynx coming in with a flank from the left side. There's not enough Lynx to deal with this. There's also no real upgrades, which is an issue. A couple of Glaive Adepts would definitely do a number on the Lynx Hydra. But that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing more Stalkers, more Immortals. We're now seeing a Robo Bay as well being added into the mix. Here come a lot of links. This is going to be a very bad fight for our Protoss players. The Queen Ling Hydra should clear this without any serious trouble. Uh, Queen's now being pulled back for some reason. Links not quite getting the surround. Now getting a much better surround and should be capable of taking all of this out. Phoenix is not picking up any links, not picking up any Immortals to try and save him either. So, not a big fan of that. Third base is mining. Fourth base, well, not on the way quite yet. Probe's now long distance mining as we have a second Ego Chamber. The longer this game goes, the better it's going to be for Eris, who is the only one that seems to be willing to upgrade. And also is the only one that seems to be capable of taking a fourth base, as there's no burrowed links on Eris' own fourth base. Well, actually, the fourth base is already mining, and it's a gold. We have a rich Vespine Geyser here that could be gotten as well. Not quite the case. These links should take out some of these stalkers. There's definitely some over micro every now and again that you can see. Where Ooh, could you fight this? I'm not sure if you can. Without upgrades, might be tricky. But here, it's obviously just better to run away. You always get this kind of like it looks a bit buggy, you know, the the the, the back and forward movement of these units. It is very beautiful. It really is something. Oh, 
There we get a pickup and a drop and a potential pickup. And no, don't want to go in. Taking a lot of damage here on the Phoenixes. Lots of cash on the bank in the bank actually for Ares, who doesn't have any larva available. And the moment they come in, are instantly being uh, being dumped into links. Now, I'd actually prefer a more larva efficient unit at this point because you have a lot of cash in the bank and you don't have so many larva. Getting two links is not quite as powerful as getting a Hydra or so. In this case, you know, go, maybe going up to to a Lurker then, just so you can spend some of that money, would be worth it. Of course, that's not quite what we're going to see yet. Attack, Ares, Ling Harass, 1048. Okay. Does that mean we're going to be seeing some Ling Harass now, or some Ling run -bys? Look at that. They're actually going to be sent around. Looking for a kill here, or looking for some uh, some worker kills, I guess. None of these bases are still being taken, by the way. So the longer this goes on, the less money there's going to be here for the Protoss player. Who's kind of stuck on this Stalker Immortal army as well. We're going to see one Colossus coming in, as well as a second robotics facility. Like, if these borrowed links are going to get cleared, it'll have to be on accident. Lingaraz now comes in, will snipe a lot of these probes. Absolutely beautiful stuff. A lot of these probes are going down. Well... A couple of probes are going down. At the same time, you see these uh, plus one carapace links also doing a decent job against the Immortal Stalker. Not all of them are quite attacking. Too many focusing on this Immortal, just kind of right-clicking on top of the individual unit rather than just A-moving. Phoenix is trying to harass in the main base. Are not really getting that much damage done. We don't have any spores on any of these bases. Income. 3.3k against 2.5k. Both players now floating at least a little bit of money. There are 10 gateways, so that is surprising to me. Glaive Adept still would be a pretty decent unit to have in this comp at this point. As here comes a Lynx around from the left side. Not gonna lock these units in place as one Stalker baits the Lynx to chase it. Hydras are gonna get cleaned up. More Hydras on the way. 2-2 upgrades also starting now. And we're still with the problem that the Protoss does not have a single upgrade. That's not a huge issue at this moment. At the moment 2-2 finishes up, there's going to be a decent Hydra count at some point. That will be an issue, because upgrades are really yeah, going to start to matter. Fort base not up yet. Where's the observers? I think they're all on this side of the map. Yeah, we have two observers, and they're both here. Neither of them so far taking out these, uh, these borrowed links. 1,700 minerals in the bank still for Eris. Who I think is going to stabilize. And once Eris stabilizes, gets maxed out. It's just going to get harder and harder and harder. 12 Hydras now on the way, which is going to be great. That's a brilliant unit to be building at this point. Although a lot of these Hydras are bleeding out. You have a constant dance. Phoenix is <laughs> going to clear a, a worker here as well. Could perhaps pick off this Hydra. Don't quite want to do it for whatever reason. Okay, going to go for the Queen. No, pick up, drop, pick up, continue going. Colossus is being micro rather well. Does not have thermal lens. It's not taking any damage either here. If you look at that, more gas is now being taken as Ares just complete economic domination. Resources lost is actually heavily in favor of the Protoss. But because of the better upgrades and the fact that there's no extra base possible due to the burrowed links, this could actually be an issue. As our Protoss now slowly but surely is being taken out, at least on the top side of things. This immortal Colossus Stalker army over here is having a blast at all. Look at the look at the Roach pullback. Every single time it gets targeted. The Hydras don't do it, but whenever a Roach gets targeted, it just pulls back. Looks very cute, very funny. So yeah, this Colossus is now going to be taken out. And this is starting to not look quite as great. Not look quite as great. Both players now reaching... Uh, well, an average of 17,000 APM versus 11,000 APM. The current APM a little bit higher. And the more units are there, the more there is to control, of course. 89 workers on the side for Eris. Still no fort base here. Main base now empty. Natural practically empty. Immortals continue to try and kite these roaches, but... It feels like we've... Uh, yeah, we, we, we're in a new world right now. Where before it felt like the Protoss player was very far ahead. The complete lack of upgrades that we have. And the lack of eco. I think it's going to be very difficult. Whether these roaches trying to burrow are just going to get caught by the observers. These ones will be caught by the obses. The blocking ones, not so much. 
There's actually a little bit of negative micro here coming out of Ares. Um, all this borrowing is, I mean, it's fun and it's great, but losing a lot of roaches pretty much for free. Army supply actually pretty close, and with this many immortals, if you're fighting against a high roach count, anything is possible, because roaches, I mean, even if they do have very good upgrades, they kind of just suck against immortals. Here we go, flank is being set up. Drones should be pulled at this point, but they're not. Immortals trying their best to help out over here. Good burrow micro, trying to regain a little bit of health in the back as well. Tunneling claws is on the way. So are the first infestors and neural parasite. So Ares is going to absolutely obliterate this fight. And at this point, there really isn't that much money going around anymore for the Protoss. Colossus in some uh, serious trouble as well. As long as these roaches keep chasing. Infestors can burrow, infestors can fungal, infestors can neural. And we have lurkers on the way. Seismic spines, not quite there. I mean, this tells the tale, right? The upgrades. Not attack errors is lurkers. Uh-oh. Like, we just don't have anything really here for, for the Protoss player anymore. Like, our Zerg is doing a good job, but our Protoss isn't. Are these lurker spikes not even touching? Look, we're just microing away from individual lurker spikes. I guess lurkers are really just single target damage units in that case. Usually the power of the lurker, of course, the ability to, to hit multiple units at once. You have some actual harass at the same time as well, so these roaches are trying to deal some damage. Still have these fights too. Infestor's kind of uh, bugging out over here. Fat Fungal's gonna connect with a big portion of the uh, army. As uh, Immortals and Stalkers now being hit by those lurkers, there's no observers available anymore. And that means that uh, I think our Protoss player is pretty much dead at this point. 95 supply to 198. Now, of course, the sad thing about these bots is that they very often stay in until the very end. And... Ooh, Ares is called Viper Food. Ah, it's gonna consume a little bit. They're just gonna speed this game up a little bit. They just wanna make sure that Ares does end up winning this, but we don't want to, you know, watch the, the Roach Hydra bug around at home for the next uh, five and a half minutes or so while the game is seemingly completely over. We got some long-distance mining. Yeah, the lack of upgrades and the lack of a fort base here really not helping out. Okay, bailing speed starts as well. I wonder what the t these tags are. Like, maybe, like, some something random where some new input gets added. Like, now it's going to be, like, a bailing harass or a lurker drop or whatever. This time it's going to be some bailing... Uh, at least some bailing harass, no drop, really. Yeah, this game is completely over. Income way too good for Ares. Played a phenomenal macro game from start to finish. It looked a little bit bad at some point with those Muralisks. Once those were lost and the Stalker Immortal attack came across the map. But the moment 2-2 finished up, it really didn't feel like there ever... <laughs> Look at this veining drop. <laughs> I'm just going for... Oh, it's not even going for the Assimilator. It just stops at it until something comes out. Just, just going for probes, I guess. But yeah, the moment 2-2 finished up to finish my story, this game felt pretty much over. And uh, not too much that the Protoss player could do at that point. So we're going to 8 times this right now. Phenomenal game. And uh, yeah, shout out to everyone that has been building these bots for the past, feels like 6, 7 years or so. It's been a blast to watch. And I check in uh, every couple of months or every year or so to see how much they improve. And it looks very cool. It still looks very cool. All right, it's going to be it for me today. I hope you did enjoy this game between the two highest ranked bots currently on the ladder. Um, if you want to play against them, which you can do, I'll leave some resources down in the description. If you just want to download some replays and watch them, I'll leave some resources for that down in the description as well. If you want to make your bots, then I'll leave some resources down for that in the description as well. Uh, they have a beautiful Discord in which uh, there's lots of people to help, so uh, be sure to check it out if you're into this type of stuff. And if not, then just enjoy the videos. All right, thanks for watching and bye-bye.